Hi, this is Tarek Sami and Manos Brilakis, and this is case 180 for the manual of CTO interventions. This is a case of instant CTO PCI. The patient had previous PCI of the right coronary artery. He presented with angina. He was found to have occlusion of the previously placed right coronary artery stents in the distal RCA. And then he had worsening chest discomfort. He was admitted and was referred for PCI of the right coronary artery. There was no significant disease on the left coronary system. What we have here is an instant CTO of the distal RCA. There is tapered entry into the CTO. There is a bifurcation close to the distal cap, although there is some landing zone there. The length was approximately 30 to 40 millimeters, and there were septal collaterals from the LED filling the right posterior descending artery. Given the favorable proximal cap, we decided to try it with undergrade wiring first, and actually we decided to use the cross post catheter, which uh, can result in a quick crossing of instant CTOs based on the cross post first study. However, we had difficulty engaging the right coronary artery and we lost guide catheter pressure. So what is going on? This can be true hypotension due to hypovolemia, heart failure or vasodilation, or can be a technical issue. And actually in our case, we checked uh, the pressures and uh, we checked the transducers and it turned out that we had actually kinked the guide catheter. So this was not true hypotension, it was actually um, pressure dampening because we had king the guy catheter next to the sheath. We were able to advance a guide wire through the area of kinking, remove the guide catheter, and then insert the new guide catheter to prevent the problem. We were then able to engage the right coronary artery with an ampla to one guide, the left with an EBU375, and then using a cross boss catheter, we were actually able very quickly to advance the cross post through the lesion. We have here actually pulled the wire inside the cross post and then easy advancement with a fast spin technique all the way into the distal right coronary artery. Contralateral injection confirmed that we had crossed into the distal true lumen. We then exchanged for the workhorse guide wire into the PDA and performed balloon inflation with serially larger balloons. Unfortunately, there was not really any good undergrade flow, which was of a concern. We performed more balloon inflation and then TM3 flow was established. We then did optical coherence tomography and OCT demonstrated with distal to lumen. This is actually distal to the PDA bifurcation. This is the posterior lateral. And then we do have some area of dissection distal to the previously placed stents. Have a lot of uh, tissue flaps. And this is the previously placed stents. There's a lot of neointima within that stent and some disruption of uh, the new intima and some filling defect inside the coronary artery, potentially white thrombus or um, uh, tissue protruding into the vessel into the uh, previously placed stent. So we placed a stent immediately proximal to the bifurcation of the PDA PLV and then overlapped it more proximally with a 3.0 by 38 millimeter drug diluting stent that provided a nice result. We still have some diffuse disease into the PDA and there was some dampening of the pressure. That is why we used uh, a guide extension inserted into the RCA. And we disengaged the guide catheter. We then did proximal optimization with a 3.0 millimeter non-compliant balloon. But there was uh, some area of uh, disease in the proximal RCA. There was a previously placed end. The question was whether we had caused some guide-induced dissection. The actual PDA looked okay, so we decided to not place any stents in that area. So we ended up removing the guide catheter. We re-engaged with a JR4 guide catheter. And then to assess um, the result, we did another run with optical coherence tomography. And this demonstrated a nice result. We have a good stent expansion. There are some areas of some mild, uh, probably intimal dissection between the two previously placed stents. And then this is the area of the previously placed stent. There is some mild disruption of the endothelium there, but there is no flow limiting dissection. So we decided to not place any additional stents. And this is the final result. Again, very good result with Timothy flow in the PDA and the posterior lateral. 
several lessons from this case. The first one is about uh, losing the pressure while manipulating the guide catheter. This should signify in most cases that uh, a kinking has occurred of the guide catheter. So fluoroscopy should be done on the guide to confirm if there is um, kinking or not. If there is, we try to turn the guide in an opposite direction than what we were turning it to try to engage the coronary artery. And then we insert a guide wire to be able to remove it and insert a new guide catheter. Often in those cases, it may be good to actually use a long sheath, like a 45 centimeter long sheath, to minimize the risk of um, having kinking of the guide catheter again. In this case, it was an instant CTO, and the crossbow catheter was um, uh, very quick in crossing the CTO into the distal true lumen. We used an amplitude one guide catheter that had good support, but there was some disruption of the endothelium from the amplitude one, so it is important to use it with caution. And if there is significant injury or dissection of the vessel, then stenting of the proximal vessel might be needed. And finally, we did use optical coherence tomography to size our stents and also to confirm that a nice final result was achieved. In this case, OCD demonstrated that there was minimal uh, disruption of the intima into the previously placed stent into the proximal to mid-RCA, and therefore no additional PCI was needed. Thank you.